for, for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. Pleb Underground. 87 rounds deep. I write rhymes all the time, sometimes in my sleep. V for Vendetta, betrayal like Guy Fawkes, making be better, sell don't buy Fawkes. Hungry as fuck, one steak, I'll kill it. This one's mignon, I'd like to fill it. She's like, what's that? Something in your pocket. She wants it direct, peer to peer, socket. Out in the weeds, what's 424? With scarce money, there's plenty for. 6-5, trust fund, heart could skip. 6-5, deep, after fill loads the clip. Pop, 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 each one sounding loud. No corporate slop, each one were proud. Girls of each color, screaming aloud. I do what I want, you do what you're allowed. I got authenticity, I'm the auth, NT City, rolled some keys but not like Jay, called Storage Bay, that's your bay, bruh, she's a six, out of ten bruh, I'll pick six, agility and stamina, no sick tricks, tell the Latin girl, I code slick, nix. This is my line, are you up to the bar? Rough play, that's the fairway, one under par, that's a birdie, come with me darling, tweet away, scrolling too far. Craft it up, it's a recipe, connection strong like rest OP, cat, consensus soon with the rest of the stack them sats, hold your own keys. I write lyrics, but not yet on vinyl. Lightning fast, each sentiment final. People talk big, quick delete, about face. This ain't web design, but it feels like a square space. Each week a rhyme, it does behoove me. One day at a time, life does just move me. Orange pills popped, and then you feel groovy. Molly sitting still, you can't just movey. Unlicensed transmitter, because you just move B. You like to chill, but is that the move G? Find a new block, work, and then just prove, see? Smooth the silk mode, Bitcoin is movey. Absolutely fire. I love the reference to V for Vendetta. And guys, in case you didn't understand who is joining us, we've got the creator of the movie Bitcoiners. We've got Rob joining us on the show. Rob, thank you so much for joining us on Pleb Underground, man. It's absolutely awesome to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great to be here, guys. Sweet. All right, man. We're going to talk about that movie. Uh, I got to I got to watch the sneak peek. So, yeah, we're going to dive into that. But before we do, we've got to take care of some business. We are going to move it on over to the numbers. Yeah, the numbers, of course, brought to us by Time Chain Stats and Time Chain Calendar. Phil, what are the numbers that like this week? At the time of this recording, the block height is 843,889. The Bitcoin fiat exchange, 66,915.14. Anyways, we've changed up the numbers. That's right, guys. Total public lightning capacity, 4,917. Fastest fee, 15 sats per V-byte. Moscow time, 1494. And some of our new stats that we've decided to showcase. The Big Mac to BTC. I know Walton loves that one. 12,900. I've literally never eaten a Big Mac in my life, like, just to be clear, actually. <laughs> no, I know, but but yeah. it's a good ratio. I'm saying in terms of, in terms a, of Bitcoin, yeah. it's a good ratio. No, it's it's a good, the reason why it's a good number no, is because, it's because they're inflation adjusted, right? And so, like, like, and they track, like, country to country. So, like, it's it's a good, like, metric for, like, actually how expensive things are. It is, it is. And and it just went up by two Big Macs. So therefore uh, purchasing power. Company. Yeah. This is that's, that's a real actually indicator for purchasing power. Yes, it might be ridiculous and like who buys Big Macs, but that's what that is. That's right. That is exactly right. And the blocks to the difficulty adjustments, the next one, eight hundred and fifteen. That's right. We're trying to add some more some more technical numbers to the numbers. So I actually got a transaction through earlier at 11 sats per V byte fill. So Yeesh. you got wrecked waiting till now. Yeah. It's cheap. But like, apparently the shitcoin has really run out of money. Um, Have maybe we really? talked about this last week. I don't know. I think, well, like I said, it, 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 this is a cyclical buying pressure, right? They, they, they like these, you know, certain periods in the new epoch, right? The... I saw tweets. I saw a tweet this week um, about some guy that minted a bunch of runes and is down like 70%. I don't know. That that kind of doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I feel like they, I feel like only Wait, the people he minted who minted them this crap or them. Whatever. I have no idea. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. Oh god. Rob, uh, before we take a look at our first article, what are your what, what are your thoughts on uh, do you have any thoughts on on runes and all of this stuff that's that's going on around Bitcoin right now? The uh, the stuff that people are getting angry about instead of the stuff they should be angry about, like privacy. <laughs> yeah, I really have not been paying a whole lot of attention uh, to to runes. I mean, uh, yeah, I'll bite. What is a rune? 
Like, is that an ordinal? E, no, it's it, it's not an ordinal, but it's it's the answer is who cares? Uh, like, didn't read, never selling. Like, fuck that. Uh, like, exactly. let's go. Yeah. Like, I agree. Yeah. Who cares? But it's like that, right? It's it's, it's like a hash and an not, yeah. It's not. Uh, it's not Bitcoin. Right, it's something people are doing on Bitcoin, like uh, making an NFT or something. Uh, essentially, I mean, like, look, it's it's not an NFT, but also at the same time, right? Um, essentially, what it is, in my eyes, is it's just a way to monetize technology that doesn't actually need to be monetized. Like, it's cool that you can do all this kind of stuff where you could insert scripts into like into op fields, and that's totally fantastic. But at the same time, right, because these scripts essentially is what creates, you know, we're not talking about runes now, we're talking about like BRC20 tokens, but essentially this is how you can create a bunch of like these tokens, right, by an, inserting these scripts. But anyways, uh, my yeah. point is, my, my point is, is that once you know that you can do that, right, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to take that technology, tie a token to it, tie a JPEG to it, tie a whatever the fuck to it, and decide, okay, this needs to be monetized. I, yeah, I don't know, you know? So I guess then I know enough about it to know that I'm not really interested in it. Like it, it <laughs> kind of sounds like this cycles version of like what NFTs were a few years ago, or at least close enough to it that I just don't want to. Act you to me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Me too. They're the same. But but the, everybody gets lost in but the nuance, right? If you say that it's the same, then you just don't understand the technology. You know, <laughs> it's, so it's like you gotta you gotta at least know a little bit about the nuance to be able to say, well, this is crappy, but for this reason. <laughs> anyways, anyways. All right, let's take a look at our first uh, numbers article. We're done talking about the garbage. Our first set of numbers comes out of the uh, out of the states, right? This uh, SAB one twenty one CRA. The first standalone crypto bill ever to pass both chambers of Congress sails through the Senate 60 to 38. Okay. And for the people who, uh, and obviously our numbers is the 60 to 38, right? So it looks like even the Democrats are against what the, uh, what the white house wants. So this is, this is kind of interesting how this is playing out. Now, a lot of people are saying that Joe Biden's just going to veto this. Uh, but for the people who don't know what this is about, the U S Senate passed a measure Thursday to overturn a securities and exchange commission bulletin that establishes certain accounting standards for firms that custody crypto. The measure will now go to president Joe Biden's desk where it will likely be vetoed. And essentially the, one of the, one of the things here, right? One of the things that this has to do with, so the SEC Staff Accounting Bulletin, also called SAB 121, was first published in 2022 and has drawn controversy over the past year over concerns in the crypto industry that it could prevent banks from safeguarding digital assets, because right now they have to mark them down as liabilities. The White House said that limiting the SEC's ability to maintain a comprehensive and effective financial regulatory framework for crypto assets would introduce substantial financial instability and market uncertainty. So that's right, guys, that vote, that vote we saw, that equals some possible market and financial instability. <laughs> if, if, I, if I'm honest, I stopped listening after Biden. Right? Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I, I like Bitcoin in part because I'm like, I don't have to pay attention to like all this politics stuff, right? Like the reason you have to pay attention to politics is because um, the only way to get ahead in the fiat world is by insider trading. And so therefore you need to know what the policy um, landscape is going to look like in the future. And you're trying to like make trades based on that. Like that's, that's, that's how, that's how normal people play, play the fiat world. If, if they have a chance at being successful. Um, yeah, I, I mean, look, essentially what it is, uh, at least for me anyways, right, what it boils down to is, is that they have no idea what they're doing, right? Like they're not taking the time to understand anything. And instead, I, I feel like it's a bunch of knee jerk reactions, right? Like forcing a financial institution that wants to custody, I hate using crypto, but we'll say just Bitcoin, right? The financial institution that wants to custody Bitcoin for some reason has to mark it as a liability, like that, it, it's just, it just seems so petty. Like that, that's what it is. It's just this pettiness. And I know there's much more to that bill than just that, but it, it, it's like, 
you know, we don't, we don't like what, what you're doing, so we're just going to punish you in the way that we can. And this is just par for the course. What, what's funny is that Bitcoin is the only one that isn't a liability. Like, the, like right. everything else. Everything <laughs> else, is, there, is a, there, is a, there is a liability. Like the, uh, the, you it know, is the bearer like, asset. Mirrors the asset, right? Like, the, the, this is not the case. Rob, any thoughts I, on this? I, yeah, I mean, I think that all of these big Wall Street firms should just, you know, trust Coinbase to hold it for them. Right, I think they're already doing that. I mean, they mostly do, yeah. Yeah, they mostly I do. I mean, that. just stick with. I think they should just stick with that. Uh, no, I'm it's kidding. terrible. I, I'm no, serious. I know you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm not serious. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I was actually surprised that uh, you know I did I did see this uh, like yesterday and this morning I was reading mm -hmm. up on it a little bit. Uh, it was surprising that that they're you know, that they passed this. And um, I mean, I think it would be political suicide for Biden if he really does veto it, you know, because that's just going to be such an easy thing, uh, like for Trump or Kennedy to to just immediately get behind and say that they'll do that if he vetoes it. Yeah. We're going to have to see. We're going to have to see what happens. But in the end, it's just noise, right? Like this is this is just noise like walton said <laughs> anyways all right let's let's shift gears here we're going to go to the next numbers article all right walton you shared this one with us we have many things to be proud of in the uk not least our tax code which at over 10 million words is the longest <laughs> 10 million i guess that's our special number and most convoluted in the world that's quite impressive, really. I didn't even that know this. Like I, heard, wow. I, I saw this 10 million words. Like by comparison, uh, the Chilcot report, which was some like political like uh, analysis um, um, about bad things, you know, government had done. And it, like, we'll skip that was 2.6 million words. Uh, the Bible apparently is about only about 800,000 words. Uh, the whole works of Shakespeare, about 885,000 words. Um, so wow. like it's roughly like 11... 11 and a half times um, the Bible, or, or sorry, 12 and a half times the Bible, like 11 and a half times the complete works of Shakespeare. Uh, and apparently the Hong Kong tax code is only 150,000 words. So by, by, yeah, basically, I mean, basically the, the UK is a, is a, is a good place for lawyers and accountants. Um, Right, yeah, like, this is what uh, I understood. Reg regu regulatory stuff is good. Is good for um, artificially creating uh, demand for services that simplify these things. I guess. Um, yeah, what is, is like the U.S. tax pandemic? code? Was it like there? by comparison? It wasn't even on that list. But I mean, I I assumed that it was very ridiculous. I mean, I, I think it's probably just that, like, actually, that may, may, maybe it's that it actually explain things get explained properly and so there's, it's not so ambiguous maybe the U uk's one is like not not that ambiguous but but i don't know so it started um, at 30 words my tax in 1913 I, I submit three numbers and the third is the first one minus the second one but but you know so according to uh the google the google machine the u.s tax code started at 30 words in 1913 and is estimated at 35 million words, almost 1.2 million times its original size. Oh, shit, size. so you got more. You got more. Okay, so they're... Yeah, okay, all right. Well done. So, No, no, but it, that's all insane. That, I mean, like, you know, that's... Holy crap. Although, if like, you do it as words about per capita, business. I think we're still winning. If you, <laughs> if you do it as words per capita, I think we're just ahead yeah. of you. That's insane. Dude, I, yeah. I appreciate you bringing um, that up, man. Like, that's, I was not aware of this. Talk yeah. about, talk about a bureaucratic business, huh? Like, that is just insane. What, like, so many places to get caught up. So many places to make mistakes. Every time they introduce a bill, it, you know, they show the, the book that it's in, and it's like a stack like this. Like, nobody yeah. reads, if, nobody reads that whole thing. If it was simple, I think you'd get more compliance. What? <laughs> you, you'd also have you, you'd also have um, less people making mistakes, right? Like, I mean, it, it, they give you enough rope to hang yourself. That you know, well, that's I by think, design, right? Yeah, right? maybe. Yeah. 
I, I think so. I'm sorry. Like that so much of that language, it's that legal speak. You know what I mean? It, it just, ah, uh, th th there's a reason people get frustrated by taxes, right? Th there's a reason that people uh, get like depressed around February. And it's not just because you're lonely on Valentine's day. <laughs> it's because you're getting ready for taxes. <laughs> I, I, I do mine at the end of January, which is like nine months. Like you can, there's like a nine month period after the tax year in which you can do it. And I do it on like the last oh. day every time, every single time. No, we don't have that here. We yeah, have these well, nightmare every year. Dude, I that's something. Yeah, that's something I definitely do not look forward to. Um, so but, anyway, yeah. the, that's a bunch of like uh, <laughs> bullshit fiat numbers, all depressing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I'm I just like to share some nice numbers here at the end. Um, oh, nice! This yeah, is, give, this give us some hopium. Time chain calendar. Ooh, look <sighs> how pretty! I know. This is my time chain calendar. Looks yeah, nice. I love huh? it. I love it. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna be. This is the one we're gonna be using at all the shows, right? Right. Yep, right. That's right. Uh, yeah. If if you if if you're out there and uh you have a show and you wanna you wanna have a time time chain calendar and you wanna have some some sort of special time chain calendar, uh, reach out to TC. He does that sort of yeah. thing. So uh, yeah. He'll customize that shit for your show. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. That's good. I appreciate you to make. I mean, I appreciate you changing it to a happy note to to end the numbers. Okay. I appreciate that. We needed that. And on that note. That does wrap up the numbers, and we're going to move it on over to the Fireside Chat. The Fireside Chat is brought to you by BTC Pins. Check them out at btcpins.com. Use the code PLEB Underground for 5% off awesome pins. Phil's pin collection. That's right. Check it out. btcpins.com. Use the code PLEB Underground. 5% off. Awesome pins. Welcome back, everyone. Fireside Chat. Rob is joining us. He's going to tell us about this awesome movie uh, that's called Bitcoiners. Uh, so, look, Rob, before we before we dive into that, um, why don't you why don't you give just quickly um, why? Why did you decide to why did you decide to make a movie? Why did you decide to contribute this way uh, to the the Bitcoin ecosystem? Yeah, so I mean, sort of the main reason why I made this film was because I wanted to make my own film. And uh, my background is in film and TV production. And I've, I've made a couple of short films uh, over my career. I've worked on a lot of other people's films. And so I decided that it was time to make my own. And that kind of coincided with uh really uh being orange pilled and and going down the bitcoin rabbit hole so uh that was like early 2020 mm -hmm. was was when i you know was kind of coming out of shit coining uh and into bitcoin only and uh, a lot of that was was just through following people on bitcoin twitter and so uh, what I realized was that, you know, there are all these great characters and personalities on Bitcoin Twitter, and there really hadn't been, I, I hadn't really seen any of these people in any other Bitcoin documentaries. And I also realized that, you know, it had been a few years since any Bitcoin docs were made. Um, so it, it really kind of coincided with me wanting to do my own thing and, uh, being orange pilled and then realizing that there was this opportunity to, to focus on all these stories that had not been told. Speaking of the, uh, the stories that have not been told, I noticed that when I was watching, um, when I was watching the movie, I noticed that you, um, the way that you integrate the themes, right? They kind of slide one story into the next, right? Um, so why did you choose to go? Because I, I noticed that you made, um, you know, that, uh, that, that you made a specific Bitcoin or kind of the, um, cause I don't want to divulge anything if you don't want me to say like people's, you know, people's names or anything from the movie, because Oh, it's okay. I no, it's, I mean, the, yet, right? the, it is out. Yeah. Oh, it is. Out. Okay. The film, okay. The film is out. Uh, people can watch it. Okay, cool. Everybody that's, that's in the film knows they're in it. 
Um, some of them have seen it already and, uh, you know, given their stamp of approval. So, yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, if we don't want to give away like spoilers for like the very ending, but I mean, yeah, we can talk about the people who are in it and, and stuff so like why, that. So I guess like, why, why did you go in, uh, in that direction with that specific Bitcoiners story? Right, because uh, essentially it's it, it's Kyle, right? Uh, for the for yeah. the Bitcoiners, for the people who know him, like I've I've met him quite a few times. We do know each other, so it's uh, Kyle Murphy uh, that has like a, a predominant role in the uh, you know in the movie, and um so and he has a very interesting story, right? He has a very interesting background as well. Yeah, uh, you know, like story. that. So yeah, so why why did uh, you know what what is it that made you choose that that particular angle to form the frame uh, of the movie around? Yeah, so in terms of like the style of the film, um, I really wanted the the story and the characters to propel the the narrative of the, of the film without using any kind of narrator, mm -hmm. and um, which was definitely challenging at times. But uh, I mean, you know, if people look at the the trailer, which is pinned on my Twitter profile, like the very first thing that Kyle talks about is his time in the military and just how awful war is. And so when I was interviewing him, like that statement just blew my mind. Like it stood out right away. And so that's why I put it at the beginning of the film. And um, I knew that I wanted to, to focus on pleb stories that was that was kind of like my mantra while while making the film and while editing it, um, because yeah, like there there are some you know well known influencer type people in it that are um, kind of talking about uh, some of the the big theme subjects, but I didn't want it to just be a bunch of interviews, uh, you know, people talking, people talking about technical stuff. You know, a lot of that has been covered in other films and it's covered in, in podcasts and books. And so for a documentary, I wanted it to be personal stories. And uh, when I met Kyle, I mean, right away, he he was just this, this amazing person. Um, one of the things when you're making a, a film like this is you need people who are really open and like comfortable on camera and open to sharing their personal stories. Um, you know, not everybody wants to kind of get into the details of, of their life and kind of what led them to where they are. Um, you know, but those are the things that make them the most interesting. And so Kyle was one of these people. And um, when I first started filming with him, he was, really kind of at the beginning of of doing these things that that we see in the film uh, you know it was at the beginning of starting pleb lab with his partner car gonzalez in austin mm -hmm. it was at the beginning of starting austin bitcoin club down there and so um you know i'd already done some filming with other people but i hadn't quite found sort of a main storyline until mm -hmm. i met kyle and it seemed like he was doing interesting things and he was kind of at the beginning of that journey and he was a great storyteller and he's been through a lot in his life and he's a really solid Bitcoiner. So it sort of just made sense to, to really focus in on him. How long did it, uh, did it take you to put this together? Because I, I do, I, you know, before the show we were, we were talking and I, I remembered, you know, uh, essentially as, as I was watching the, uh, the movie, some of the scenes, I was like, Hey, you know, like I was there for that. So I, I know yeah. that that was all the way back in like 2022. So how long, I feel like this, I feel like this movie took a while to make. <laughs> this movie did take a while to make. It took about two and a half years to make yeah. it. And so uh, I started shooting in the summer of 2021 at Miami Bitcoin 21. Mm -hmm. And then um, I shot for the rest of that summer into the fall uh, and early winter. And then 
uh, throughout the spring and early summer of 2022. Mm. And most of the filming was done by like late 2022. And so it took a very long time to edit um, because I just had so much great footage. I mean, there, there are probably like a dozen people that I filmed that were just completely cut out of the film um, for various reasons, mostly for time, uh, because like the first rough cut I had of the film was almost four hours long with everybody in there that I wanted to include oh, wow. all the different stories. Yeah. Um, and so it just took a very long time to, to like whittle down the story, even though I, I knew what I wanted it to be. I kept trying to keep things in. And um, so, you know, by the summer of 2023, uh, some stuff had changed in Kyle's personal life. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that needed to be included in the film because towards the end of the film, but without giving too much away, he kind of lands in one place and things are looking really positive. It's going to be a happy ending. But then it took me so long to finish editing that things had changed. So uh, summer 2023, I went back and filmed one final interview with him to kind of put a cap on, on the ending and bring it more into the present, um, which still mm. kind of reflects where he is now. Um, and then finishing it off took a few months after that. And then in February of this year, um, I did the premiere at Bitcoin Commons down in Austin. And then I launched it online after that. Nice. Nice. Okay. What was the, uh, what, what was your, uh, your biggest challenge? biggest hurdle with uh with doing this because i i feel like from watching it i noticed that you were at like multiple locations so i feel like you had to do a lot of travel for this so what was uh what would you say was the uh, the biggest challenge i think the biggest challenge was just completing it and um part of that you know at at one point i kind of dropped off Twitter, you know, the day-to-day -day banter mm. of, of what's happening. I mean, it, it, it's but a it's good so place. it's so constructive. Why? <laughs> it's very constructive. <laughs> I mean, it definitely, uh, it definitely helped inform some of my, my editing decisions and stuff that was cut out. Um, but I think just committing to sort of the themes, not even so much the personal stories of the, of the people in the film, but kind of the overarching themes, um, you know, so much happens in, in like, you know, the, there's like a, I don't know who said it, but like one day in, in Bitcoin is like six months in normal world, you know, something like that. So things would come up where I, I thought they were important to focus on. And then, you know, as time passed, it, they were less important and mm -hmm. maybe not relevant. Uh, and same with some people in the film that, um, you know, maybe damaged their own reputations through uh, whatever it was they were up to made me mm -hmm. sort of less, less inclined to want to include them because one of the goals was, you know, this is a Bitcoin only film. Mm. Um, so people that started dabbling in other things, uh, I, I didn't really want to include them in the film. Um, so I, I think, I guess the, that's sort of the long answer. The, the shorter answer would be, um, you know, separating the signal from the noise, uh, throughout like a, a year plus editing process mm. was the hardest part. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. And it's interesting that you bring up the the Bitcoin time thing, um, because it, it does. Bitcoin, I don't know what it is, but the people that I know that are, you know, kind of involved and around Bitcoin all day long and essentially, you know, either talking about it or building on it, whatever it is, um, it somehow warps. It, it just warps your perception of time and the amount of things that happen, which seem significant on the moment. 
but then you look back and they just go, they fall away into the blur of the Bitcoin happenings noise, you know? So it, it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it definitely, uh, it definitely screws me up. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, I tried to, you know, include storylines, I guess, or, or themes that, um, could be relevant, you know, moving forward, like people watching, like my, my so, biggest fear was that like, I would release this film and then everything in it would be irrelevant and everyone would be like, Oh, I already know that. Um, but I think some of the, the, the stuff that the film focuses on is just as relevant now as when people were talking about it, when I interviewed them. So the smaller narratives can change, but I think, uh, I think you did a good job with the overarching, um, narratives and themes. And I, I think that that's to me, what ties all the, the different stories together. It's that kind of high level view of, you know, Bitcoin touches all of these different parts. And then it's kind of like you zoom in right into each of those and, and kind of give, um, each of those narratives, you give them a life you know, so to speak. But I, I did have another question for you. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, I just, I totally lost it. Oh yeah. Is, is there anybody that you wished that you could have gotten into the movie that, that, that you didn't? Sorry to put you on the spot for that one, but I, no, that's okay. know, it's just like, we, we always have people that we would like to speak with, right. That we would like to capture a certain amount of content with. So it's, I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the thing that I, found very mind blowing at the beginning was that most of the people that I reached out to said yes. And I had no idea. I didn't know any of these people prior to making this film, prior to reaching out to them. Um, and I just didn't know what, what the interest would be. Uh, so a lot of people said yes, that I just wasn't able to get to because I already had too many people in the film. And I was already facing having to cut a bunch of people. But um, I mean, yeah, there, there, I can give you three people that probably are not a surprise uh, that I would want them in the film that are not really in it. Um, Michael Saylor, Jack Dorsey, Jack Mallers. Mm. Um, all three of them I reached out to. I had multiple back and forth communication with their team. Um, and, you know, just for whatever reason, couldn't make it work with any of them. I'm and it's fine. It, with a couple of those, maybe. The it, kind you know, of... I was like, <clears throat> I was bummed about it for a while. And then at a certain point, I was like, I don't really need them. You know, like, it, it'd, one be, of those it'd be nice three, to have. I'm one of those, like most, most people, I don't know, you meet at conferences and you say, hey, do you want to hey come on Pliv underground let's let's talk some talk some stuff and most people go yeah cool yeah one of those three people could have done that and instead said oh speak speak to this 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 girl here you know she's a she 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 does that or something it's like i don't know you could see that we've like, had this there's, experience there's, there's, as well <laughs> there's there's some people who there are some people who are big names, but I don't really think they do much for Bitcoin. To be honest, I think they, you know, they 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 push KYC products, um, or or own yeah. them. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it it, mm. it would have been a different film. I mean, really, what it comes down to is I would have had to cut interviews with other people if I was going to yeah to make if, their stories. If one of, yeah, yeah, if if one of them would have said yes i would have had to cut someone else and i mean i'm happy with how the film turned out so i do have a shot of sailor in there talking on stage with mm. max kaiser so you know that was enough just to have him doing that I, I i think now it's it's probably even better that he's not in it as an interview kind of is it kind of is because yeah huh let's talk about identities talk about dids and the blockchain <laughs> yeah sure 
<laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I'm just saying it's like <laughs> uh, not such a good look, huh? This is and this is why we don't, uh, you know, we don't usually uh, we're we're not the cheerleading type, right? We're we're definitely we're much more of the critical thinking, like let's save the cheerleading. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's okay. was, we've we've seen this story before, right? With that what was happens. something I I wanted to kind of avoid because um, you know all of these people that said yes, I was like, man, this is this is great. Like these, you know, some of these people are like big names. This is going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to reach a large audience and, um, where to go with this. <laughs> I, I know um, what you mean. It's, it's tough. It's, uh, yeah. The cheerleading, sorry, get, getting back to yeah. what you said, the cheerleading, you know, I, I don't, I decided that I don't want to like simp for any of these people, you know, no matter what they say, uh on twitter or on wherever you know news and, and always just be cheerleading for them you know that's that's not that's just not what i want to do so no. if somebody didn't want to be in the film fine or the people that i do have in it i don't even really interact with them much you know i mean i've told the majority of the people that are in the film i have sent the film to and said it's done please watch it if you want to so, but I, I, yeah, I don't want to do the too much of the the public cheerleading, either. Yeah, I I, I hear you. So let me, uh, I guess, let me ask you this: If people want to to check it out, uh, you said the the trailer is uh, is on your Twitter uh, and your pin tweet. Uh, but yeah. how 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 do people get access to the movie? How could they watch it? Yeah, so bitcoinersmovie.com is the website where I have the film hosted. And we're going to add that to the show notes. Thank you. Um, on Twitter, I'm at Bitcoiners movie. And so that has my, uh, trailer at the top. And it, I also have a link at the top where you can watch the film. Very cool. Very cool. Right, we're going to add that to the show notes and guys, guys, this wraps up the fireside chat with Rob. Don't forget to check out the movie Bitcoiners and we are going to move it on over to Wrecked. Wrecked is brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out at cyphersafe.io. The pet rock enthusiasts in total disbelief. That's right. Here it is. The Bitcoin Rolo Triangle. 16 ounces of solid titanium. Beautiful craftsmanship. Check it out at cyphersafe.io. That is the Bitcoin Rolo Triangle. Here we go. Let's dive into Wrecked. Uh, this account, Crypto Devil, uh, during the uh, during the uh, the Craig Wright uh, trial against Copa, um, before I got access to the uh, the actual trial itself, I was following this account for the amazing news. Anyways, it just doesn't seem to end, right? It just doesn't seem to end for uh, for Craig, even though he's pretty much gone into hiding for a little bit. Anyways, ahead of the L, uh, I guess it's the London Blockchain 24 and the hugely embarrassing written judgment due shortly declaring Engine Global and BSV founder Craig Wright a con man and fraudster likely facing criminal charges. Dr. Craig, Craig Wright is thrown into the memory hole. And that's right, guys. He was going to present... And not so much, not so much anymore. Is anyone really surprised? Now, I have seen a few. I have seen a few uh, BSV uh, geniuses um, that seem to think that uh, him in hiding and uh, Calvin in hiding, it, it's because they've got something huge planned. Um, it's not going to be what they think. <laughs> like it's, it's just not going to be what they think. So, because this this thing is falling apart. Falling apart. That's it. It's done. Anyways, any uh, any thoughts on? Uh, is anybody really surprised uh, that he's not going to be showing his face at the uh, essentially his own blockchain conference? Because <laughs> that is what the London blockchain conference is, right? It's a BSV conference. Oh, I never heard of it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, That's... me neither. It's the whole thing is just so embarrassing. Advancing Bitcoin is the London Bitcoin conference. I don't know. I'm, I'm not genuinely not heard of heard of this. Yeah, this is just this is the BSV um, conference that they pretend. No one's surprised. Craig Wright wrecked. Moving on. Moving on. More. Yeah, moving on. All right. Tweet from Tyler Durden. Here we go. BlackRock can take as much Bitcoin as they want from Coinbase, and the transaction is recorded off chain. I'd like to see 
All the all the ETFs wallets. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. You massive cunt. Okay, so I, I think I, I think that this one we can talk about very quickly because I I do kind of have some some reservations. I, I think that something that nobody has been able to provide uh, up until. At, at least I haven't seen it, Rob. Maybe you've seen it, um, but the reality is, is that the ETFs, um, number one, they don't actually. Th there is no stipulation as to how much Bitcoin they need to hold onto in relation to the number of shares that they issue. The only, uh, the only thing I've seen is that they. It says that they have to purchase Bitcoin, but it. Again, there is no there there is no standing ratio, and the other piece to it is this, right? Um, what do you think about them having to uh, divulge essentially what their Bitcoin wallets are, so that they could be, you know, essentially transparent to the public? I part of me, like, obviously, is like, yes, right? I I want to know, but at the same time, I'm thinking more of the the pseudonymous aspect of Bitcoin and it's like, do they, should they be forced to divulge this information? I don't know. Well, don't, don't we already know? Because like, fuck the state, you know? Well, so. I, I agree with that. But don't we know how much they, they own just by when they disclose how much they're buying? Well, I guess, I guess so. Right. But the thing is, is that they can sell and we don't have to know. That, that's the key, right? Like we can oh. pretty much know when they're buying, but the reality is, is that the fine print from what I saw and people, right, the, the viewers can correct me if I'm wrong. There is this stipulation that at any time they can hold um, any percentage of what they call this as uh, the basket of assets, right? Which includes, uh, you know, bonds and cash and other, you know, investment, investment vehicles. So I... I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of gray area in this. So is he saying that they can like dilute the ETF shares based on whether or not they disclose how much they own? I, I think what they can do in this particular tweet, what, what he's explaining is that they can essentially buy and sell their Bitcoin off the books and it never touches the price, right? You never actually see it on chain on the market. That's that's what I believe it, he is saying. So now, does that really surprise any of us? I mean, I I don't think. I mean, I don't know. I'm not so I, I'm not surprised. Like they're they're the custodian, right? Like why wouldn't they be doing this stuff off chain? But isn't Coinbase the custodian? Yeah, yeah, they are. That, that's what I'm saying. Like Coinbase is the custodian. So it's like, <laughs> they, it's the it's their sandbox. It's their rules. I mean, are we really surprised? I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, I mean, I would I would expect that there's going to be some financial fuckery that happens with yeah. these ETFs. That you know, it could already be happening, or maybe it it doesn't happen for like another year. But you know, stuff that that we don't necessarily know about until i don't know until it's too late i guess well pretty much right i mean everybody you know for example right everybody was touting block fi you know like uh, all of these cheerleaders right they were all so excited to get yield on their bitcoin and all that and hey uh, one day to the next it all of a sudden just changed but anyway yeah. speaking of financial fuckery we're, we're going to move on to our last uh, our last tweet here um to Bitcoiners, this is no surprise. Uh, this is no surprise at all. Uh, but to the to the people that think that they're actually um, standing up for something real when they when they're touting this ESG crap, all of this stuff is falling apart because it it has no fucking merit whatsoever. Anyways, Eric Balkunis, here we go. Twenty seven ESG ETFs been liquidated this year while only two were launched outflows are over five billion dollars bitcoiners not in disbelief bitcoiners told you like this was a this was a total freaking grift uh so yeah total reversal from a few years ago to quote good fellas this is the bad time and yes yes it is um uh, but again we're not surprised. We are not surprised that the ESG narrative is getting more and more wrecked because you see, this is the key to those narratives. 
which is those narratives have to move very quickly through the news cycle and they need to have the maximum impact in the shortest amount of time because the longer they stay out there, the less effective they become and the the sooner we get to the point where they completely unravel. And we're, we're seeing it case in point, right? These things did not work up the momentum they were supposed to and now they're just completely falling apart. Uh, I can't say that I'm upset to see it because I'm not. <laughs> It's, I think it's beautiful. I, I, I really do. I think, unfortunately, this, you know, this ESG stuff, we all know it had nothing to do with saving the environment, right? It has nothing to ever do with doing anything good. It always has to do with more control. Anybody surprised? No, I'm not surprised. I had not seen that, but um, I do want to search for it, you know, like on CNN, MSNBC, and then search again in like a month and see if anybody's still talking about it, you know, or like even a week, see if, if it's just like a one-time thing that they report or see how they spin it and then never talk about it again. Let's be honest, right? There's going to be, there are people who have gotten severely wrecked off of holding this crap, right? And buying into this stuff. Yeah. So, you know, like that's, and I told you so, you know, unfortunately, like, uh, yeah, it's Bitcoin bad. Bitcoin is it, right, once again. Exactly. No surprise to us. No surprise to us, but definitely a surprise to, to TradFi and the people who touted the uh, the ESG narratives. Uh, Walton, that was uh, that was wrecked. That was wrecked. Anything, uh, anything to add before we move on? Before we wrap up? Yeah, I guess fuck shit coins, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> fuck the ESG much. narrative. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, huh? It's a shitcoin, right? Yes, yes, yes. It's a shitcoin. Um, yeah. It sure is. It sure is a shitcoin, guys. And on that note, wraps up wrecked, and we are going to move it on over to the Hopium. The Hopium. Up next, we have Hopium sponsored by Proof of Ink. If you head over to proofofink.com, you can find some phenomenal designs and collaborations that Proof of Ink have created with Pleb Underground, with Time Chain Calendar, and many more. You can buy, you can buy merch. You can support the show. You can support Bitcoin Pleb businesses. This is proofofink.com, and if you use the code Pleb, you will get 5.8% off all of the merchandise once again that's the code pleb for 5.8 percent off at proofofink.com welcome back to hopium this week some exciting developments in the bitcoin world um shh, silent payments um what are silent payments well how about we have someone who supposedly may know something about privacy although the guy did get arrested so i, I don't know if, like if how how accurate that is uh, but he was this guy is well known as being i believe the lead developer of monero um people's favorite privacy shitcoin now rick fluffy pony says my read of silent payment addresses for bitcoin is that they work similarly to monero's stealth addresses except Using ECDH instead of DHKE requires that the Bitcoin recipient scan the chain and compute the shared secret for each input and compare it to outputs, which is similar to Monero's view key scanning. Has anyone done a comparison of the speed of scanning on both and or a comparison of the privacy gains? This sounds like a real privacy win for Bitcoin. I'm extremely excited. And I'd like to share the comments from uh, Josie, who I believe is a Bitcoin core developer. Um, he says... I'd say the biggest difference is, is that instead of using an ephemeral key, uh, if I remember correctly, that's what Monero uses, senders use the private keys from their UTXOs for the ECDH. This means that the public keys and transaction inputs can be used by the recipient for the other side of the ECDH. Benefits here is that the shared secret is communicated between the sender recipient at no extra cost. It also means the transaction looks like any other Bitcoin transaction. 
regarding scanning the chain it's more accurate to say that you scan the utxo set you just need this additional piece of data per each utxo in order to do the ecdh the sum of the input public keys of the transaction this allows it to work for light clients scanning can be outsourced same as the monero view key sign up payments has a scan key and a spend key spend key can stay in cold storage scan key can be outsourced to any device that you own or trust since whoever has the scan key can seal the transactions same as an x pub okay so like what what is all this silent payment stuff about um essentially um you can have um uh, an address um the the isn't um what's the word like isn't scannable for most people so they can't they can't find the they can't find the balance of this address now this 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 only works from like an inbound perspective so um if if you then take these utxos and spend them together you're going to reveal privacy right the the um it, it doesn't it doesn't this isn't just like a fix for on-chain privacy um, yeah. but it but it does allow um like silent reception of yeah of payments i'm Kinda definitely cool, huh? yeah it's very cool i was just thinking about it i'm like i'm i'm definitely gonna have to read more into it um i think i, I think this morning on uh, good morning bitcoin uh, tc was talking about it and i i think it's like you if I'm not mistaken, like you can just have like any set of words, like even in like a bank transaction that could be a payment, or maybe I'm missing that. Maybe I'm confusing that with something else. Say that one more time, Phil. Like, like, let's say you send a bank transaction to somebody and it, you, you can include a message, right? Like we're talking about like a bank to bank transaction. And in that message, you could include a silent payment. If I understood this correctly, but I, I could be wrong. I, I, I might be confusing like the two. In I think it's more that in in that message you're essentially I think it's a bit like you're sharing like the the X pub mm -hmm. um and and then the the receiver is is it's going to an address that's created from the X pub of the sender and the private key of the recipient and so then the the recipient can can spend from it if they know the, yeah. the public key of the of the sender. Um, it's my understanding, but I could be, I, could, I could have completely misunderstood this. Um, I I I think it's a little bit like I know that some of the the samurai people have this have this have this thing where you can send you can send to a pay him right, and then that yeah. that that set. I think this is a little bit like that sort of thing where you have um like one essentially static address but without privacy concerns mm. so it's like it's like having a forwarding address yeah um for like a PO, for, for like a PO box like a PO i guess box? so yeah yeah i mean look it it's all of these tools is is what essentially gets us to the next steps right like if we're not if we're not trying this stuff out if if we're not learning about this stuff then to me like we're we're just you know we're falling behind so like yeah it may not be the silver bullets right Bec and that's okay it's i i think that we kind of i don't know as bitcoiners like I, I don't think all of us think this way but for some reason that there's people that like every time something comes out it's like that's the silver bullets like that's not how this works you know like it's it's not going to be this one thing like we we get that bitcoin fixes right bitcoin fixes money but like Bitcoin is the tool. So to me, like, we're not going to get another tool that becomes the silver bullet on top of Bitcoin. I, I just don't, I just don't see it. I think we're going to get a set of tools. Anyways, what are your thoughts, Rob? Yeah, I like that idea about a set of tools. Uh, I mean, with this, this tweet, this is the first time that I'm hearing about it, but I mean, it seems like a good idea um, because it, it reminds me of a couple of weeks ago, somebody i don't know who it was tweeted about um you know if you if you search if you take any like xpub bitcoin address and just like google it it will um 
show like the whole history of that wallet, like all the yes. transactions, <laughs> and, which is very, I never thought about that. Thanks I don't know Google. Why. Yeah, I'm sure. I don't know if that was possible before. Just people didn't talk about it. Um, I mean, this just hearing about it now seems like it could help against something like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Phil, I agree with with what you said. Like Bitcoin is the tool. There are other ways that we have to learn how to use it properly for each individual. All right. So I think like right now. I, I think where this could be useful um, is with uh, on-chain withdrawals from from an exchange. Um, there are some exchanges where, for the sake of convenience, people dox their their addresses by by sharing their their public key. Um, Maybe this could this this could be a solution to 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 that kind of convenience um, choice um, without without the the privacy implications. Um, I mean, I personally just would rather withdraw over Lightning, but each to their own. Like, um... yeah, I can't disagree with you on that. <laughs> yeah. And that's why we're going to have multiple tools, right? Not everybody's going to appreciate the same solutions. And that's okay. <laughs> you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. What's next, Walton? What do we got? That's next? it. That's it. That's it. That was it. That's, that's what we've that's got. We got. Um, we, we've only got yeah. silent payments. Sweet. Silent All right. Well, you know what? We'll take some, it. And some silence. That's it. Um, <sighs> no. Uh, what are, Wait, we, we no, have one other I'm, I'm kind of hope. I'm hopeful about a lot of things. Like, I think I felt like we're on the cusp of something. I think you, you felt the same energy, right, Phil? When we were at Bitcoin Plus Plus, there's, there's, there's a... The the fear I don't know the the in the fiat world a lot of people don't have hope. There's a lot of hope in the Bitcoin space. There's a lot of yeah. Bitcoiners building things. What's the expression like? Comfortable, moisturized in their lane. Um, <laughs> you know, like oh, I hate picturing that. Picture being... super test net like coding in the bath or something. Like this is where we're at right now. And I mean, maybe don't pitch that. But <laughs> uh, don't do you, that. I don't know. I feel like we're 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 I don't know. I feel like oh. we're in a good place right now, and I'm qu I'm quite hopeful. I'm quite <laughs> hopeful about Bitcoin. And like, I haven't talked about the price. I think the price, you know, may, who knows what's going to happen? But Dude, like, we're dead I, at sixty-seven. I also think it kind of. It's not that it doesn't matter, and there's some people who think like you know, Pla our, our boy Plan D says you know that there, there is only one measuring stick, and that is the price. Um. But I think anyone who doesn't think that the price and the tech are linked um, can't understand relationships that have a phase difference. Mm -hmm. um, in any sort of um, ecosystem, you have interdependence between different factors, right? And feedback loops. Yeah. Um, the the what prompt what pumps price i think most people think is is it's kind of attention and adoption right um doesn't need to be like mm -hmm. adoption in terms of people but it does need to be adoption in terms of the money right um and as the tech scales um i think it enables more um more attention and adoption um and I'm I'm confident right now about the tech and it's scaling. So we'll see what happens. So speaking about the uh speaking about the money, speaking about the money, we do have we do have one more link. And this was uh this hopium was brought to us by Rob, our guest. Let's take a let's take a look at this here. Hey, right? this is a tweet here from uh, Representative Thomas Massey. Should I introduce a bill to abolish the Federal Reserve? Look at that, guys. Do they really do what the people want? Hey, because because look, to see it's... it, one hundred and fifteen thousand votes. Eighty-six percent of people said yes in the Fed. Love to see it. 
but yeah, you it's see... bullshit though. Like, come on, like, po like polls don't mean shit, right? No, like, I know. Like, it's too like, bad. it just it doesn't matter, unfortunately, um, because the incentives are for it to pass don't don't align with who who needs to pass it right the people no. who need to pass it um essentially would just be cutting their their budgets down to what they honestly honestly <laughs> but like <laughs> tax quotes. for right like it's 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 you you if if you end if you end the fed you're ending um central buying of treasuries you're essentially forcing the treasury market to be purely commercial mm. um and i'm pretty sure recently the tread the the, the the fed just reintroduced um a treasury buying program to to you know just to to put some liquidity in the market essentially to to pump treasuries mm. because the commercial banks weren't buying them so i i don't really think it's going to happen any anytime soon as 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 fun as that would be and plus i'm kind of on the team of coin accelerationists and i think if you i don't know it's opium it's opium. let them print yeah yeah i, I mean i don't think it's going to happen i i think it's a good thing that he's at least talking about it and introducing yeah a bill for it but yeah i don't think at this point it's going to pass i mean that would that would cut out the the cancel on effect as well and the elites too, love that yeah there's way too many people that rely on that way too many organizations and it's yeah that's not happening yeah the whole system but it's nice. It's nice to see that we're not alone, right? It's nice to see that we're not alone and that a bunch of us kind of do feel the same way. And um, yeah, on that note, that is going to wrap up the Hopium. And it also wraps up this episode of Pleb Underground. And before we go, Rob, one last time, how can the plebs find your movie, Bitcoiners? And how can they reach you? People can go to bitcoinersmovie.com to watch the film and follow me on Twitter at Bitcoiners Movie. Awesome. That's going to be in the show notes. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Help us grow the channel. Don't forget to check us out on our audio-only platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. If you want to stream us sats, check us out on fountain.fm. You can stream us sats through Breeze. Walton, how do we end this? Fuckshitcoins.com. Please like and subscribe. We will see you next week. Peace.